Hey family, welcome back to Beloved Always and I hope you're doing wonderfully well. So in today's video, I'm going to try and respond to a video request that I got from one of the subscribers on our channel. And the request was for me to share how to get back up and strengthen your faith in God. So this question is excellent because it talks about continuing to run the race despite setbacks, despite falling, despite things that may happen along the way that cause you to maybe doubt God or to draw away from him for a season. And I believe it's so important that we know how to be resilient, how to be consistent, how to run with perseverance. Because even myself, when I look back on my walk with the Lord, I know there have been seasons where I've drawn away from God or my faith hasn't been as strong as it should have been. I've not been abiding in his love or abiding in the word. And so how do I strengthen myself in those times? How do I encourage myself to persevere, to keep running with endurance, to endure to the end? And so if that's something you would think will be edifying for you and beneficial for where you are in your walk with the Lord, then keep watching this video. So this is a very broad topic. I mean, I can go into many different things that we should do in order to strengthen our faith in God and get back up. But but the thing that I believe the Lord was really leading me to focus on when I prayed about this topic area was the issue of repentance. Now the reason that I believe the issue of repentance is so heavy on God's heart is because it's something that we don't just do when we come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ but it makes up a significant part of our walk with the Lord. Now of course there is a difference between the repentance unto salvation and the repentance that we do when we have a personal and intimate relationship with God but it does still hold a foundational place in our Christian walk. If we are to continue walking uprightly and righteously, then there's going to have to be a turning away from the things that do not please the Lord and a turning towards the things that please the Lord on a constant basis. And that is what repentance is. Repentance isn't just about the saying sorry, the being remorseful. True repentance, true godly repentance that leads to salvation is one which involves a changing of the mind, a changing of the desires, a changing of the heart. And that's something that not only God is able to do within us, us, but we are able to appeal to God to give us the grace to do that as well. And so you may be asking me the question, okay, you're not really addressing the topic area. How is this related to having faith in God and getting back up? The reason why repentance is a catalyst for this is because we know from scripture that sin separates us from God. That was the whole reason to which we needed to have faith and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. We needed that great gulf, that great chasm to be bridged by the blood of Jesus Christ. And even though right now you may have a relationship with the Lord, the sin in your life still will cause a separation between you and God. Not a separation to perdition or to being condemned or to being lost, but a separation that means you aren't able to fully experience the joys and the pleasures of intimacy with the Father. I like to liken this to any earthly relationship that you have with someone that is very close and intimate, maybe a best friend or a family member, a cousin, a spouse, someone who you're near and dear to. Now, what would happen to that relationship if you or the other person continued to do things that hurt or broke the heart of the other? The relationship will gradually become more distant and eventually that relationship may cease to exist. Now that's what can happen with the Lord. When we start to feel far away from him or we start to feel as though um, we're not walking by faith or we're not walking righteously, the first thing we need to do is assess ourselves and examine ourselves and say, okay, is this the chastisement of the Lord? Is he kind of having his hand heavy on me because he's not pleased with what I am doing? And is this a way that he's trying to discipline me, to lead me to repentance so that I can come back to him and establish a restored relationship that is even more intimate than it was before? So having established the need for self-examination and repentance in trying to strengthen our faith in the Lord, I want us to have a look at Psalm 32. It's a Psalm of David and David was a man after God's own heart. And his story always encourages me because as much as he had an intimate relationship with the Lord God, he sinned, he murdered, he committed adultery. And Psalm 32 kind of outlines his reflections and the outpourings of his heart and how him, a man who fell from a position of intimacy with God to a very low place, but then was able to re-establish that relationship to cause restitution between him and the Lord and walk out righteously despite the fact that he fell short. 
And now I want to encourage you with David that as much as we know it is absolutely not God's will for us to sin and to transgress his law and to break his commandments, that there is a grace for us in Christ Jesus. Not the grace that causes us to continue in sin, but the grace that causes us to obey and walk righteously. And so if you do fall into sin, if you do fall away from God, then please allow the story of David to encourage your heart that yes, even a man who was chosen by God to lead, to be a king over Israel, he still fell into sin, he still was tempted, he still was led away by his own fleshly desires, but yet he was still able to restore that relationship that he had with God through seeking repentance and through turning away from the wicked ways that he once walked in. So let's read Psalm 32 together. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Therefore, let everyone whom is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters, they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Be not like a horse or a mule without understanding, which must be curbed with bit and bridle, or it will not stay near you. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy all your upright heart. Now, I absolutely love this psalm. It really comforts my soul. And even in my own personal walk, this is a psalm that I turn to in times of repentance, in times where I know, okay, I've sinned against God and I've completely done what is evil in his sight and I need to um, receive forgiveness and repent and turn away and remind myself of who he is to me. And so bookmark Psalm 32 is one of those. Another good one is Psalm 51, um, but I'm not gonna touch on that in this video. So please do take up time in your own personal quiet time with God in your secret place to just really read Psalm 51. 51 meditate on it and understand what God is saying concerning this topic so I'm going to touch on just a few things that I want us to take away from Psalm 32 I love how it starts off with blessings it starts off with blessings and the promises of forgiveness now I want you to know like I've mentioned before there is forgiveness in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the reason why God offered him as a sacrifice for the whole world. And he raised again on the third day, confirming and affirming him as the son of God and the lamb who takes away the sins of the whole world. I want you to really, really hold on to that because sometimes we can convince ourselves in times of trouble and in times where we are so low and so far away from God that we are past the point of forgiveness. Um, and that is almost like we trample upon the blood of Jesus and say, that blood isn't going to cover me. I've done too many bad things. I'm too much of a sinner. I've done too many evil acts. But no, there is forgiveness in the Lord Jesus. The veil was torn for a reason. He said it is finished for a reason. And so come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy in this time of need of yours. As we can see in verse 3 and 4, the psalmist talks about the heaviness that he felt during the day. I have felt this heaviness. Like when I sin against God, when I do something that I know I shouldn't do, there is a heaviness that comes upon us. And I know some people say, oh, you know, there's no condemnation in Christ, which I completely agree with. But I believe this heaviness comes from the chastising hand of God, which says, okay, you're going to feel the effects of your sin, that you may turn to me and pray to me and then I can heal you and forgive you. And this is exactly what the Psalmist describes in verse three and four. He says, for day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer, there have been many days where I've just kind of not wanted to get out of bed, um, when I have just been so low, so sad, so remorseful over my sin because God's hand was heavy on me, because I understood the brokenness of fellowship with God doesn't compare to maybe the momentary pleasure that you get from the sin that you love to commit. And when we acknowledge this, this drives us back to the Lord God. And so 
Um, as much as this is a very unpleasant thing to feel, it is confirmatory that the word of God is true because it means indeed he is chastising us because he loves us. And he doesn't do this that we may turn away from him, but he does this that we may run back to him. The next thing I'm going to point out is the importance to confess your sin. Now, confession is part and part in admitting to what you've done wrong, but also agreeing with God, like agreeing that what God says is good is good and what God says is evil is evil. So in verse five, the psalmist talks about acknowledging his sin and he talks about confessing his sin as well. And as a result of that acknowledgement and confession of sin, God forgave his iniquity. And I believe that this is really, really important in terms of renewing the mind, because sometimes you can fall into this trap of making confession a religious act and making it something that we do because we know we have to but taking it deeper to actually acknowledge that wow I have sinned against the God of heaven it's against God I have sinned even though I may have done something wrong to another person to a family member ultimately it's God that I've offended um, and ultimately I've offended God because I've broken his law I've done something that is against what he said I should do so please really take your time with this and this is a hard thing because it means there needs to be a searching out of our hearts and we really need to bring to the surface the things that we truly believe the things that we truly love because when we confess sin and we acknowledge that what God says is good is good and what God says is evil is evil then we are calling some of our deeds that we do or that we practice or that we enjoy evil and being able to truly accept that wow okay this is evil in the eyes of God and so I do not want to do it I want to completely remove myself from it and actually allowing yourself to renew your mind in that is what causes Causes you to stray away from the path of sin and walk more constantly and uprightly on the path of righteousness. The next thing I want to point out is the need for us to really be diligent to do this as quickly and as promptly as possible. Don't let cycles of sin or acts of sin kind of linger and lead in from one day to the next day. Every single day is a new day for change. I spoke about this in one of my videos. Like this is the time for change. Today is the day of salvation. Don't allow patterns or habits of sin to continue into new days, new weeks, new months, new years. Nip them at the bud, cut them at the root before they destroy you. It is important for us to seek the Lord when he may be found, which is what the Psalmist talks about in verse six. God's grace is present with us now. And so let us truly, truly accept it and embrace it and walk in it. A verse that I love to encourage myself with is in Proverbs and it says, the righteous man falls down seven times but gets back up eight times. And I like the analogy and how it relates to Jesus' teaching in the New Testament about forgiveness, you know, forgiven 70 times seven. It's a countless number of times. It's not literally that the righteous falls down seven and gets up eight. It's just that every single time you fall down, you make a commitment in your heart that, you know, I must rise again. I must turn away from this thing. Or I must draw my strength from God. I must renew my mind. And you don't give up, you don't quit. There's a need for us to endure. And something that I really am not happy about is this whole culture of letting go and letting God. Of course, God is in control, but there's a need for us to truly work out our salvation with fear and trembling. If I don't repent of my sin, there's no forgiveness for me. And that's something we have to acknowledge. And so I really want to encourage you to seize the day, to seize the moments you have, those quiet still moments you have with the Lord in your heart, and um, to reflect on the things that may be separating you from him or to reflect on the things that may be causing your faith in him to weaken when you get that unction from the holy spirit that is bringing things to mind address it there and then it may not always be possible of course things are going on in our lives but don't allow things to delay do not just presume on the grace of God. As much as we know that God is good and he's faithful and we say tomorrow is another day, we have another chance tomorrow. Today is the time to get things right because who knows what tomorrow will bring. We can't presume on tomorrow coming. And so before you shut your eyes to sleep each and every day, make sure that your walk with God is going in the right direction, is going in the way that is leading you to claim your salvation and to take hold of eternal life that is set before you through Christ Jesus. And finally, my most favorite part is God's response to us when we do these things. The psalmist talks about the Lord preserving him from trouble, the Lord surrounding him with songs of deliverance or shouts of deliverance, the Lord instructing him and teaching him and guiding him with his own personal eye. God is such a personal God. Like God doesn't want to push any of his children away. God doesn't like to chastise us, but he will because he's a good father. There's an adage in my culture which says, with one hand, 
the parent pushes or disciplines the child and with the other hand it draws the child closer and that's exactly what God does with us and there is a promise that indeed he's going to draw us nearer to him he's going to teach us he's going to give us the wisdom that we need to next time when we find ourselves in a similar situation to not just fall or go back to our vomit or return to the dirt that we came from but truly to walk in grace and faith and overcome the things that Jesus Christ died for us to overcome like truly indeed Christ died to give us victory over sin in our lives and that victory over sin should be made manifest daily of course in different scales and different measures but there should be a progression towards righteousness and holiness because like it says in scripture without holiness no man shall see the Lord God and so there is a need for us to strive to truly apprehend that which he has already given to us in Christ so to sum things up and answer the question of how do I get back up and strengthen my faith in God, firstly examine yourself and see if there is anything in you that is not pleasing to God. Repent of your sin, trust him to forgive you of your sin and draw near, enjoy your relationship, allow him to teach you through his word, allow him to guide you through prayer and through your relationships with other believers and really rejoice in your salvation through Christ Jesus. I hope this has helped and encouraged you and given you some wisdom and things to think about and chew upon. Please do let me know if you have any questions or comments or any other video requests. I have got a list and I am slowly working my way through. I'm going to make a playlist just to collate all the requested videos in one place so that you know where to find them and so that when I do address your question then you can watch it and kind of go back to it in your own time. Um, but yeah, please do feel free to send me any more requests and I hope you have a wonderful week ahead and I'll see you again in my next video. Bye!